Hello, Glenn here from Digital Photography Courses. So in this quick video, we're going to give you 22 uses for the Move, Shoot, Move, Alan Wallace, Type, Z and V platforms. Uh, hopefully in around about 22 minutes. Um, if you'd like to see these slides, then you can nip to the website and they're all on there as well. So number one. Using the V or the Z platform, I'm just going to say Z, but I mean Z, um, as a level ball head base. Um, now, this is probably its most recognized configuration. We've got the move, shoot, move, and without the bracket on, the V or the Z bracket, um, you can see here that we can get sort of obstructions or the unit can hang off the back um, and be quite unbalanced. And what this bracket allows us to do is have the platform, the ball head, nice and level. This can avoid obstructions and is also really helpful for things like panoramas to give you that level base. And the nice thing is the whole thing packs up lovely and small into its pouch. Number two, using the V or Z platform as an alt as mount. So on this occasion, I'm using the V platform and uh, obviously you can rotate that on the tripod. So we're fitting straight to the tripod legs here. Um, in this configuration, I'm using the base of the MSN rather than on the slimmer side. Um, and we've got a ball head on the top. And of course, the great thing is you can actually just flatten this whole thing down and again, put it straight into its little pouch. Um, and in this configuration, you can actually include the laser and also the bracket. Number three using the V or the Z as a, um, a tripod head replacement. So here, rather than using two ball heads, then what we're actually doing is using a V and a Z bracket to replace ball heads. And uh, obviously, you, on this occasion, we're using the V as an old has mount. And then we've got the, uh, the Z bracket there on the top to uh, act as um, a sort of leveling base and we can also rotate and tilt around to get our targets. Um, obviously the MSN unit is going to rotate during the various exposures, not a problem, there's a little thumb screw here at the back, undo that and then you can just level the base between shots. It also makes it very easy to tilt down and tilt up and again it, the whole thing packs away into its pouch, though on this occasion if you have both attached, um, you won't be able to get the, the, um, the laser, etc. in there, but they will both fit in the pouch. Number four, to balance the weight over the centre column. Um, if you're using longer lenses, now I know that really the move, shoot, move is intended for wide angle Milky Way shots, but I know a lot of people do like to push it and put uh, longer lenses on. And here we're using a 300 millimeter lens. And by using the bracket, uh, you really do need the, the Z bracket or the Z bracket for this one. Uh, we're able to move the center of gravity of the lens over the spindle rather than having all of the weight on the back of the camera. And then um, the lens, you know, sort of very heavy at the front and unbalanced. Um, on this occasion, I'm using the move, shoot, move wedge. The wedge is my kind of favourite way of getting aligned. It's You've got the fine adjustment screws, which makes life a lot easier. Uh, and there's a photograph. This was my very first image, um, long lens image taken of Andromeda. And this was 150 15 second exposures. You see, we get the inevitable sort of satellite in there. We could take that out. Um, and as a guide, people ask, you know, what sort of exposure times they can expect. And I tend to work on if you're on full frame, the 500 rule. If you're on DX, which I am, the 300 rule. And so we go 300 into 300 gives one second and generally speaking you can reckon on between 10 and 15 times whatever the 300 rule is using the move shoot move tracker okay number five using the Z platform as a nodal rail. So if anybody's got a nodal rail, I use one, I've got a nodal ninja, and you know they're quite sort of bulky, and they take up quite a bit of space, not always ideal if you're traveling, and so we can use the Z platform as a nodal rail. All we really need to do is we need to get the nodal point over the center of the tripod and basically you're moving the camera back or forward and then rotating left and right until the um, background and foreground stay aligned. Um, there's plenty of videos online if you want to find out the nodal point of your lens. And you can also see that we can use it for tilting down and tilting up, which makes it ideal for multi-row panoramas. And of course, the other benefit is the whole thing folds super flat for transportation. 
And here's a photograph taken using it as a nodal rail. Um, because these logs were really quite close to the foreground, we had to do um, a three shot panorama and make sure that they lined up nicely. And so, um, and then I've added a blended sky, which was actually taken at the same time. Number six, using the Z or the V platform as a L bracket. Um, L bracket's very useful if you'd like to turn your camera into its upright orientation. Um, my, I use mainly Manfrotto tripods, so I need, if I do that, I need a base on both the upright and the horizontal. But here, using an L bracket, uh, sorry, a, um, a Z platform as an L bracket on this occasion, I'm able to get plenty of clearance and also this is useful if you've got sort of cable releases and things plugged in there. If you've got the V bracket you can still use this but it is a bit tighter um, to use so um, you're better off I think with a Z bracket really uh, and the other benefit of course is you can just fold the whole thing um, flat when you're done uh, which is ideal and uh, you, for your horizontal shooting. Um, also great for things like multi-row panoramas because you can undo this little screw here and rotate the whole unit and keep everything level. Ideal. Number seven, using the Z or the V platform as a pano head. Now some uh, ball heads uh, don't always come with the ability to rotate for panos so you actually have to uh, rotate the ball head itself. Um, and likewise, some uh, pan and tilt heads don't always, um, sorry, uh, some cheaper heads don't always rotate. So being able to pop a V or a Z platform on gives us two benefits. One, we can just simply undo this screw on the end and rotate it on the turntable for panos. And you've also got the ability to actually tilt up and down so that you can um, do multi-row panos if you need to. And of course, the whole thing is folds flat enough to just leave attached to the tripod. So a rotating base uh, for a ball head. And here's a shot here. This is a multi-row panorama. Um, so this is three rows times seven. And um, it actually covers around about 220 degrees, I would say. If you think about the Milky Way as being 180, um, you can see there's a lot in there. This was a use that actually came about while I was planning this video. I needed to do something, and this, this is how I achieved it. Um, we're using the Z platform here as a copying arm. Um, to do that, we need to get the camera parallel to a desk to copy old photographs, etc. cetera. Um, and the easiest way to do that, by the way, is if you look at the image in the viewfinder or on screen uh, and all the sides around the object, the, the calendar in this case, are equal, then you're parallel. Uh, also recommend that you use a self-timer or a cable release, but you can see there it, you can use that as a copying arm. Um, we can also use it, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the correct name or I've made it up, but we can use the uh, Z platform or the V platform as a zenith mount. Um, this is ideal for overhead Milky Way shots. The um, what we're doing here is we're keeping the centre of gravity over the centre of the unit instead of having it hanging over like this, which is most unstable. Uh, and the benefit of the Z bracket, Z bracket, is you've got this extra clearance space. So if, like me, you have a camera with a flip out screen, this is a Nikon D750, then you've got plenty of space there to be able to see what's going on. And of course, you can actually rotate the whole unit if you'd like your Milky Way in a slightly different direction. And of course, as before, the whole thing's compact enough and flat enough just to keep on the camera. So I don't know if that's a proper thing, but as a zenith mount. And there you go, there's a photograph taken using that setup. Um, so this was 10 times two minutes. And you can see here, so we've got Andromeda Galaxy. And just so you're looking straight up. Again, this is one that came about as I was playing this video. Um, to use it as a height extender. Um, this is a Manfrotto tripod with the extendable arm, which does get over the 
table but of course it wasn't quite high enough to get me away from the subject so by using the z bracket or the z platform in this sort of configuration underneath the camera i'm able to shoot straight down and get over the object um, for the sharp eyed amongst you the, the brand uh, plan title was a to z of uses uh, and only when i photographed it did i realize that i'd put the z the wrong way round. I think I was trying to get the text in there, I think. So um, there you go. But never mind, it demonstrates the purpose. Um, Z platform or the V platform. I tend to use the Z platform. I find it more useful um, as a phone holder. And the great thing about this is it's completely tiltable to whichever angle you need. Ideal in this day and age for Zoom and conference meetings. Uh, just a couple of little tips. Uh, it's a good idea to have the lever pointing upwards uh, just stops the phone coming off there and you can obviously adjust this back and the back lever i just have that pointing backwards it just gives it a little bit of extra stability more so if it's in the right orientation that's 11. number 12 as a compact camera stand now anybody that's got a compact camera and has bought one of these silly little um, tripods um, mini tripods they're pretty hopeless as soon as you put the tripod on the side then they tend to overbalance they're pretty unstable and uh, they're not really that convenient i don't think um so what we're doing here is by using the in the, again on this occasion it's the uh, Z bracket, but you could use the V. Um, we can have it in this configuration here for our horizontal shots. I mean, this is kind of pointing skywards out of habit, um, but obviously for group pictures, you could use it. And um, we can use it in this upright orientation for upright shots, which is something it's very difficult to do with these mini tripods. And of course, if you need to tilt up or down, just loosen the screw and you can just tilt up and down as well. Okay. So as a mini compact camera stand on the same topic, we can actually use it. It's strong enough to use as a tabletop mount or a, a low level mount for a DSLR. So this is a D750 with the 20mm 1.8 lens on. And this is actually a configuration I've used quite a bit. Um, we're using it underneath the camera to tilt the camera up. Um, now, this is not using the move, shoot, move. This is just for kind of stacked, untracked Milky Way shots. But this is really a good grab and go setup. You don't need a tripod. You're just going to stack multiple images. Um, and the way I do it is I set my ISO, shutter speed, white blanks, etc. and aperture. Focus on the stars, then just switch to manual focus. Make sure that you switch any image stabilization off, then take a test shot and check focus and exposure. If you're happy with that, I just set the self timer to shoot nine frames with a five second um, starting delay just to make sure everything's settled. Uh, and then I just stack those shots to reduce the noise and add extra detail. Uh, and the great thing is, again, is it's compact enough to just leave on the camera uh, if you're moving around. Works really well. And here's a shot I've taken using that platform. I've just got the camera resting on a, a rock or a boulder, a nice flat rock. And uh, this is uh, nine 15 second exposures, and they are stacked in Sequator. To, um, and that works really well, and edited in Lightroom and Photoshop. Similar uh, setup, or pretty much the same setup, really. Um, I needed to get really, really low down, much lower down than I could with the tripod. And um, th what I've done here is the camera is actually resting on a path um, because I needed that angle. And it's the, just basically the technique. All I've done here is light painted the foreground. And the sky is added in extra in Photoshop, but it is the real sky. I just went round the front of the building, front of the church, and did a four minute exposure of the sky, but it was in that orientation. Um, using the phone holder to align to the opposite celestial pole. So this might be useful for guys in the southern hemisphere, um, and but it works best, I think, with the wedge. Um, the reason being is it's got the Arca Swiss plate on. I know a lot of tripods do, but what we've effectively done is reversed the MSN so it's facing the wrong way. And then making sure that your phone is parallel with the phone holder and the MSN, um, I'm aligning 
to the south celestial pole. I'm obviously in the north. Um, and then when I'm happy, I've taken the whole unit off. So unscrew it from the Swiss arc, Swiss mount, flip the whole unit 180 degrees around. And now we're facing towards the north celestial pole. And um, if you want to, you can always grovel down here and squeeze underneath the tripod and um, just double check it if you wanted to. Um, but, uh, and then obviously once you put the camera on, it's a good idea to double check anyway. But that might be useful for people if you cannot see the poles. Uh, and I've actually tried this using the phone holder in this configuration with a 135 Samyang lens. I can get 60 seconds. In fact, I can probably get 90 seconds um, without too much trouble. So that's number 14. And there is a picture taken using that exact setup, um, the Wichita Nebula um, aligned with the phone. Uh, the reason I need to do this is because I'll, my garden is quite small and to see over the house, I have to go right up against the trees. Uh, when I do that, I can't see the North Star Polaris. So I align to the South Celestial Pole and then just switch to the direction as mentioned. Um, uh, and I'm using the PhotoPills app, the Spot Stars feature in PhotoPills. Uh, the V or the Z as a flip head. So again, some tripods or, uh, don't have the ability to have your camera upright, or if you do, it can be quite sort of tricky. It's a two-way head. This is actually a three-way head, so it would do it. But for demonstration purposes, if you had a two-way head, what we can actually do is use the Z or the V platform and use it as a right angle bracket or a flip head so that we could do our upright shots. Um, and of course, the benefit is once you want to go back to horizontal, you can just flip it back down as well. And as an added bonus, we can unscrew the rotation screw and we can also use it as a pano head as well. So extra uses there. Um, webcam or a microphone holder. Uh, on this one here, 1617, um, webcams tend to be very lightweight. And so popping one on one of the brackets or platforms gives you the ability to angle it to suit and also keep it nice and stable. Uh, as you can see, is an extra thing, just tilting this um, locking screw forward just gives you an extra little bit of stability at the front. And likewise, with a microphone stand, uh, the, most microphones tend to be directional to some extent. And so um, this means we can angle it in exactly the right direction to get the best sound. Number 18 and 19, as light holders. Um, again, it's something I use quite a bit. Um, I like to use my low level lighting for my um, landscapes, astro landscapes, and being able to have something like the bracket, you can just hide this behind a, um, a stone or a tussock of grass or just something, uh, just keep that out of sight and you can light your subjects up with a nice uh, low level LED lighting. Um, Likewise, if this is quite useful as a replacement for a ball head, um, we're using the bracket here. This is the Z bracket, Z bracket, and um, we're using that to give me some overhang. And this is quite useful for, again, recording meetings and things if you need a little bit of extra light and you can just sort of tilt it over the, the desk and give yourself a bit of extra light. Or you can take this outside as well. And here's a shot using them for that purpose. Uh, so we're using some lighting, low level lighting uh, from the right hand side. And also in this case, a little bit of extra sort of torch light. Um, I much prefer to use constant low level lighting for these type of shots. It was quite dangerous here actually, because I could have easily fallen off that cliff um, just if you're wandering around in the dark. So having a constant light source uh, made it easier. And this was stacked in Sequator. OK, using the phone holder to find deep sky objects. So you, for the phone holder, you will need to modify it slightly because you need to put a hot shoe mount on it. And you can pick these up really quite cheaply off Amazon, um, $67. Uh, and this actually comes with two. So what you're doing is you're screwing that into the phone holder and then that's going into the hot shoe of your camera. And you need to make sure that your phone and your camera are perfectly aligned. Uh, but what it means is you can now use something like Stellarium or Sky Safari 
safari and point the camera uh, at your deep sky objects. And I've used this to find deep sky objects. Now, what you can also do as an added thing is if you take a picture of the star field on the back of your camera, you can load it to astrometry.net and they will plate solve it for you and they will tell you where you are in the sky and you can then see if you need to change your position and recompose. So useful little tip there. So you just literally photograph the screen. Just be careful not to include anything other than the star field. 20. OK, and there's a photograph of the cigar and the Bode galaxy used and found using the targeting uh, system, as shown there in Stellarium. OK, that was a total of 66 30 second exposures at 6.3. Next, using the phone holder as a control center. Um, I like to use the what's I like to use the Pluto trigger. That's this little gadget on the top. Um, and you, the great thing is this connects to your phone and you can just sort of work out the number of exposures you need and how long and delay and all sort of thing. But it means keep putting your phone down or in the pocket or something like that. By using it as this little control center here, I can keep the phone handy, apply all the settings. What I like to do is have a five second delay just so that there's no shake uh, before it starts shooting the first pictures. And um, and then as an added bonus, if you want to, once it's running, if you're out there doing 100 odd exposures, you can pop, um, you know, YouTube on and watch Alan Wallace or somebody like somebody interesting like that or videos. Um, so there you go. That's using it as a phone control center. 22 using it as an interval timer holder. So um, again, we're just popping it on the back of uh, the MSN and having it in this kind of V configuration. Um, you can just rest it in there. Or if your timer fits, and mine does, you can actually have it going horizontal across and it fits nicely into that hole. So as an interval timer holder. OK, there's 22 uses for the Z and the V platforms. But wait, there's more. Bonus tip. You can also use it as a snow cone holder uh, or an egg cup. <laughs> so there you go, guys. 22 uses in uh, 22 minutes, hopefully. And um, if you need to check these slides out in more time, by always watch this again. Or if you go to my website um, forward slash MSM, then um, you can have a look at each slide in turn. And there are links in the description. So please like, subscribe and do all that stuff. If you need to email for anything, there's the address. And I do uh, Ask Glenn sessions over Zoom if, you, if I can help you with anything. Um, there's Instagram. And if you do buy anything from Move Shoot Move, if you use the code Glenn at checkout, you can get yourself an extra bit of discount. So thank you very much. Uh, this presentation was actually given at the Night Photo Summit, along with my good friend Alex McGregor, fabulous photographer. If you haven't seen his YouTube channel, then go and have a look at that. So thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed that, found it useful. And any questions, please comment below. Cheers now.